Good morning. I'm I'm very happy to to be with you for these 15 minutes to talk about uh, our trials with biochar in uh, in Nepal. And uh, I I have uh, to admit that uh, some 10 years ago um, I decided not to travel anymore to Asia if I have not the time uh, to go overland. But then came this incredible uh, opportunity to, to work in Nepal and to introduce uh, the biochar technology in these countries and uh, to, to work with the farmers and uh, to discover uh, their culture and, um, and uh, knowledge. And um, so I decided to go. And uh, with, uh, with my family, end of last year, we went by airplane um, over most of um, Asia, deforested Asia, and um, arrived in Kathmandu and uh, started uh, to, to to work with the people. And uh, we have now something uh, like 140 uh, field trials uh, set up with um, stable crops and cash crops, uh, all different kind of cultures at uh, 15 different um, villages in uh, different climate regions uh, in between 400 uh, meter altitude and uh, 2500 uh, all over the eastern half of the country. And uh, the whole started uh, last year then uh, when we uh, were thinking about how could we possibly uh, produce the biochar in this country, as it was clear that uh, we, we cannot um, introduce um, high-tech uh, pyrolysis units. And um, I think you, you've heard enough uh, during these three days uh, about uh, the Contiki and the flame curtain pyrolysis. Um, that in fact was uh, developed uh, for this Nepal project, and uh, and it was uh, I would say by accident uh, that it worked so nice that uh, these contikis are found now in in more than 40 countries, and uh, become a new kind of democratization of uh, of biochar, but. Um, uh, last winter we we started uh, in Kathmandu to work in a, with a metal workshop and uh, tried uh, to build uh, with uh, the possibilities and the technique and the machines um, very low tech uh, to to build uh, this kind of big uh, one cubic meter uh, contiki from steel. You can see we we uh, had to do it uh, octagonal because uh, bending was not possible. And uh, we tested in the field, and it was um, rather rapidly clear that uh, even if the Contiki is rather cheap um, uh, compared to uh, to um, continuous fed uh, high tech pyrolysis, uh, it's still much too expensive for farmers uh, in this country. So we compared. Uh, this uh, kind of regular contiki with what we call then the con agno as agno is uh, the fire god um, in uh, in nepal uh, which is um, in fact the same form as the contiki uh, but dicked in uh, into soil with a stone uh, wall around and um, as you can see you can uh, you can produce a very nice uh, biochar also in this type of um, of kiln there are some uh, uh, disadvantages uh, uh, this is clear but uh, the, the biochar quality as we tested uh, is is fine um, emissions are uh, also low and um, so we we tested different uh, types different forms uh, of uh, of the contiki also from metal uh, and then we came to this uh, very nice in between which we like much it's uh, it's it's uh, really not expensive and everybody in every village can can make it so it's a mixture between the metal contiki and uh, the soil pit uh, as you have this uh, the surrounding wall and then uh, you can um, uh, fire it in the same way as you can see here with the rice husk sugarcane uh, charring. So 
Uh, as I said, we, we introduced the Contikis in, uh, in these uh, 15 villages uh, where, where our team works. And, um, and now we have uh, more than 100 uh, Con Agno, Contiki uh, um, uh, kilns uh, all over in these villages. And uh, these farmer families, uh, they produce their own biochar and they, they become inventive, making it with stones. Uh, and uh, in different forms, and uh, there's a, there's a lot of uh, tons of biochar already produced. Um, so what I want to talk about now is uh, how how to make this biochar uh, to to uh, benefit uh, the crops, um, which is not evident neither. So the first step uh, is that uh, the biochar has to be charged with uh, with nutrients. Um, as, as we, we understand biochar uh, rather as a nutrient carrier. Um, and um, so what we started uh, right away is blending the biochar with liquid uh, fertilizer so that uh, the um, water dissolved nutrients can enter the porous system of the biochar. And uh, then the other uh, new method is uh, in the application that um, we, we decided that uh, 10 tons of biochar when farmers produce biochar or have to buy it uh, is, is still is, is economically not viable. And um, so we had to find a way uh, how to use uh, lower amounts. And uh, that is uh, when you apply the biochar very concentrated, uh, close to the root zone, uh, that the plant can profit uh, at maximum from the biochar and uh, biochar hold nutrients uh, instead of um, instead of applying it uh, over the whole field. And here you can see a picture from a, from a trial with onions that we did. So you can see that uh, with, with this application technique, you, we have one ton of biochar, um, and this is a biochar NPK slurry that we used for the onion planting. So you can see the onions, they are um, directly uh, pla uh, planted into the substrate. The substrate is uh, mixed with a bit of soil, and then uh, you, you plant uh, the onions um, uh, directly uh, to, to the biochar. And um, as you can see um, here uh, with uh, four field trials uh, that we did in a terai with one ton per hectare of biochar we had an average yield increase very significantly of uh, 18%. So for one ton uh, that's uh, not so bad and um, this is compared uh, the control is always uh, with the same uh, nutrient amounts as uh, in, in the biochar treatment. Um, so it's fully fertilized. Uh, well, what we compare is farmer's practice uh, to, to an advanced biochar practice. So um, it really has to prove its merits uh, um, in, in the field. Um, and here we did the same with uh, mineral uh, urea um, biochar slurry at two tons per hectare in, in, in the mountain region of Dolaha. And uh, also highly significant, uh, we uh, could improve uh, the yield, the potato yield, uh, of about 18%. Um, so 18% is, 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 is not so bad, but it's, uh, we, we were still looking for more. And uh, here you have some results from a trial with tea plants, also with about two tons of, uh, of biochar. And um, we had a yield increase of 28% for tea, which is uh, quite significant. And, um, and uh, especially also for the leaf quality um, that uh, improved. But uh, still, uh, what uh, we were especially looking for is uh, another 
another thing is uh, how can we close nutrient cycles? We're not so much interested, uh, finally, in, in, in mineral fertilizer, but we would like to, uh, to create an organic uh, biotra fertilizer blend uh, that can replace uh, mineral fertilizer. And uh, so what we did is that um, we quench the um, uh, biochar. Here you, here you can see it in, uh, in a metal kiln, but it uh, works the same uh, with, with the Conacno or soil kiln. Uh, we quench it with uh, cow urine. And uh, in the same uh, region where we did the uh, tea trial uh, with, with mineral fertilizer, uh, we did a more complicated setup um, with pure biochar and uh, with urine charged biochar, hot and cold, and with the same nutrient amounts uh, urine. And now uh, we get a highly significant and much higher uh, yield increase and also quality increase. And um, so that's, that's where we are really heading for. Um, especially uh, here in, in, in this tea. The, this is all tea production for export and uh, there is extra value for organic tea. So if we can replace a mineral fertilizer and hold the same yield or even increase, then this is a, a huge advantage for the farmers. Um, and then uh, here you can see from a Chile trial, uh, always uh, as, uh, as, as you have seen, uh, applied uh, to the roots and we get with the organic, so with the urine biochar, a 220% yield increase. So I will show you very rapidly how we, how we set up such a trial. So we transport this, uh, this envelope uh, of, of this uh, mixed uh, con acno con tiki kiln. Uh, we prepare the place and then um, it's uh, ready to fire. The people bring uh, this forest killer eupatorium uh, um, shrubs as a feedstock. Uh, it's very dry, it ignites very quickly. Farmers learn how to do it. Um, and uh, here we, uh, we quenched it uh, first uh, with some water. And then uh, we wanted to make a pumpkin uh, field trial. So we're digging, uh, you see huge uh, holes and uh, on this top of the holes, this is only for the seeds. But in these uh, pits, uh, we will apply compost. People carry it to the field. We prepare the urine biochar uh, slurry, uh, mixing uh, the cow urine uh, with biochar. Uh, applying the compost, uh, applying the biochar urine slurry, mixing both uh, together, adding some soil and mixing, and two months later you see uh, the results, uh, pumpkins growing very nice, so that was in April. Um, harvest uh, was uh, in end of May, and uh, you can see big pumpkins, but uh, what will you see with the results? You can see a highly, highly significant increase from urine only. So this is same compost for all treatments, but uh, one treatment only, the urine uh, was applied as nutrients and the urine biochar uh, where we mixed the slurry and we have a yield increase of 300%. And this is a rather fertile soil uh, and it makes up an 80 ton per hectare pumpkin yield. So this even in industrial American farming pumpkin yield is really high. And uh, so, th so this is something that uh, we are looking for. Uh, it's already published and uh, it's open source. Uh, you, you, can, um, you can read it. Um, so what we did now is uh, we, we prepared the farmers uh, to, um, to build pits, urine recovery pits, where uh, they can uh, apply directly the biochar to charge it. And um, we even uh, equipped a school uh, with uh, 720 students uh, where we are going to recover uh, the students' urine uh, in the biochar and the farmers get the fertilizer back. And uh, so 
uh, there are lots and lots and lots of uh, of new trials now. We get every week we get new results from these farmers. They try this uh, biochar on all their crops, and uh, they have a protocol how to follow it up. So here you can see in in mice. So we have an um, a mice cup uh, increase. Um, of 87% uh, with urine biochar compared uh, to the control. So in stable crops, it works quite nice. You have you see here uh, in tomato, fantastic uh, results. Uh, you can see here in banana, you see here, uh, this is urine biochar treatment and this is uh, the NPK uh, treatment um, for, for banana after, after three months. So, so you can see when I come to the conclusion, and I hope uh, you 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 will follow um, me uh, into this uh, for this last minute. Um, so, if you are a farmer or gardener, I would say make your biochar yourself. Uh, quench it with nutrients, recycle organic nutrients to charge uh, your biochar with it. Apply this biochar concentrated. Um, to the roots in this pumpkin trial, it was only 750 kilogram uh, per hectare of biochar, and inject uh, nutrient biochar slurry to the root zones. Thank you so much for the time that you gave me. Bye bye.